And we're back. Thank you so much. I've received a lot of positive responses on my last video. I promise to keep this tutorial simple to the point and answering all of your questions about coding with C Sharp and the Revit API. So we're just about ready to get started with some heavy stuff, with some interesting stuff, but we still need to complete some installations. So I just want to walk you through that today for those who might be having challenges with the installation. The first thing we need to check for is that we have all of our DLL files. We're going to go into what they are in subsequent videos. I'm trying to give you information in bite-sized pieces to get you feeling confident with coding. And then we're going to drill down into like the technicalities and what does this mean and what does this do? But I found as a self-taught programmer myself, that if you start getting too bogged down by details too early, it's overwhelming. It's too much to know. So let's start first. I promise I'm going to explain everything. Be patient with me. Stick with me. The website is asking us to have our Revit API.dll and our Revit API UI.dll installed. It's typically located in the Revit program directory. If you have an active Revit installation, you already have these two files. You do not need to do anything in addition. I'm going to show you where you can find them. Navigate to your C drive. If this is your personal laptop, it should have your name on it. Go into your program files folder, not program files x86, not program data, not Autodesk, program files. Inside of program files, go into the Autodesk folder and then navigate to your active Revit installation. It's very important that you go to the Revit version that you are trying to make a plugin for. So if you're trying to build a plugin that you test on Revit 2020 or 22, doesn't matter, go into that folder and you're going to see a bunch of files. The two files they've asked us to be concerned with are the Revit API UI and the Revit API .dll file. And if you scroll down, you're going to find them very easily. This is the Revit API.dll file, and this is the Revit API UI.dll file. It's very easy to find them, and you don't need to do anything with them for now. Just confirm that you have them. The second thing I'm going to walk you through is how to install Visual Studio. Now, Visual Studio is an IDE, it's an integrated development environment, which means it's how you compile your code. It's how you go from having lines of text to a program that works. Now there are several options for Visual Studio. There is Visual Studio, the application that most beginner programmers have probably experienced, which is Visual Studio Code. That is not an IDE. It is a kind of coding environment that's more friendly for beginner level, experimenting with Python and so on. The IDE is either community or professional or enterprise. Now community is the only free version. And because we like to keep things free and accessible, we're going to be working with Visual Studio community. So if you search for Visual Studio on the web, it's going to bring up this website. Make sure you're on Visual Studio community and click on download. My download has started. It's a simple .exe setup file. Make sure your antivirus is not taking this file away. It's free, so you don't need any cracks. You don't need to disable any firewalls. It's a free application. You don't need to do anything. You just need an active internet connection and to allow the download to run. Next, you're going to navigate to the folder where the file has been downloaded. You're going to right click on that file and click on run as administrator. Sign some license agreements. As soon as you are done installing, you're going to see this very interesting pop-up window. Now, this is where you set up Visual Studio for the first time. If you remember in the last video, you would remember that I said it's a .NET framework. So we want to set up our IDE, our coding environment to be .NET framework compatible. So 
we're going to scroll down. You can see we have some options here for ASP.NET, Node.js if you're a web developer, Python if you're a newbie developer, or you just want to build simple tools to automate your everyday tasks. What we want is .NET desktop development. If you're using the latest versions of Visual Studio, it should be .NET desktop development. If it's some other form of .NET development, you can pick that if you're using an earlier version of Visual Studio. But we really want to be on desktop development because Revit is a desktop application. Not to be confused with multi-platform app UI development, which if you can read the description, this is for building Android, iOS, or Mac apps. That's not what we want to do. So when you click on .NET development, on the right hand side, you're going to see a list of optional tools. Now we want to be on the latest version of .NET. So you can see here it's installing .NET Framework 4.7.2 development tools. We would also want the 4.8.1 development tools because we want to have the latest tools so that our software runs on the latest build. So we're going to select that. For now, we can ignore everything else. Don't worry, it's very easy to come back to this screen if you forgot to choose all of this. And then you click on install and it's going to start installing. It's gonna take some time to download the files. While you wait, grab a cup of coffee, go get your lunch, get yourself relaxed because you're about to become a C-sharp developer. Okay, and once it's done downloading, you should see the option to launch Visual Studio. So click on launch and let's get started. At this point, you're going to need to create a Visual Studio account with your email and it's going to try to sign you in with that account. If you were asked to create one at the time of downloading, you'd be able to sign in with those same credentials. The next thing we want to do is to create a new project. So there are four options when you start up Visual Studio for the first time. You can clone a repository. So if you want to clone a repository, for example, you found some code online using some of the resources that I've discussed on the channel, like the Building Coder blog, for example, and you want to just clone that code into your computer so you can build off of that code. Please, please never copy and paste anyone's code ever. Besides the rules of plagiarism, which makes it very illegal to copy someone else's work, you can never control how another person's code works for you. You can open an existing project or solution. So when you create a Visual Studio project, you have a bunch of files that support the coding process. The actual file that contains your script, the actual file that will contain your main code is called a solution. If you look at my recent files, the file format is .sln. Those are the solution files. The project file is a folder of different files, but the one you want to be opening is the solution. So you can also open a local folder where you have your files, but what we want to do right now is to just create a new project. As we've clicked on that, we're going to see more options. What kind of project are we trying to create? Is it a console app? Is it a class library? Is it a Windows Forms app? Is it a Windows Forms app with a .NET framework? You have so many options. For us, what we want to do is to create a class library that targets the .NET or .NET standard. If you look below, you'll see C Sharp, Android, Linux, Mac OS. It's important to know which of the class libraries you are selecting because if you look just below, you can see a Visual Basic version of the class library. Because we're going to be coding in C Sharp, what we want is the C Sharp class library. And so if you click on that and click on Next, you are giving a chance to name your project. The class library we want to make has to be named without spaces. As a general rule, guys, computer programming does not like spaces. You will often see underscores or symbols in between to demarcate between words. If you've ever copied a URL, which is like google.com, for example, a domain name, sometimes you see this funny looking symbols like percentages or S's or dollar signs. That's because computers hate spaces. Code is unable to interpret spaces. So 
So as a general rule, do not use spaces. Some of the more common conventions for naming code are camel case or capitalizing each word. In this case, I'm going to capitalize each word and I'm going to call it our first Revit plugin. If you're an advanced C Sharp programmer watching these, please don't crucify me. I know that there are conventions for naming in C Sharp. I'm teaching people who have no coding experience and I'm trying not to get you bogged down in the very, you know, fine details. We're gonna get there. We're gonna go from not knowing how to code at all to being semi-professional. Okay, so we've named our first Revit plugin and I'm gonna say next. Please note the location that the files are being saved to. You can change this location. I don't need to change them because I'm already familiar with navigating to that folder. But when your solutions are built for the first time, that's where they're going to go into. That's where you can find the file again. If you don't want to find them through Visual Studio, you can copy and paste that URL to a sticky note or a notepad on your desktop. If you click on next, this is a chance to choose which .NET framework you want to work with. The one you choose is based on the Revit build. Typically, using the latest .NET framework will work with the latest version of Revit. And using an earlier version of .NET will work with an earlier version of Revit. I'm going to recommend that you download and install the latest version of Revit because that's what I'll be using for this tutorial. And we're also going to be selecting the latest .NET framework, which is 8.0. And we click on create. It's creating our project. And voila, we have liftoff, guys. We are in. We are ready to code. It's time. Are you excited? I know I sound hyped, but trust me, getting to this point, this is where things start to get interesting. If you've made it this far, you're ready, you're invested, you can do this. I'm self-taught and I've been able to build code that has been globally recognized. As you can see that people have been referencing my thesis work where I made a plugin using C Sharp and the Revit API, guys. This is exciting. I'm very happy you made it this far. Don't go anywhere, stay subscribed. In the next video, I'm gonna be walking you through the Visual Studio interface so that you're a bit more familiar with what the thing does. And then we're going to dive right into building our first ever program. Thank you for watching. See you soon.